Earthlings, welcome, welcome uh, to yet another Still Alive, which I can confirm uh, we are. And um, what what's the health of your impressive bladder, Ronnie? Well, I'm hope, I'm hoping it'll be all right. I've 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 had a cup of tea not long ago, and I've got another one here. So. <laughs> all right, so you so we'll you're have to of... see, we have to see. I might have to disappear halfway through the show. Well, you've never you've never done it so far. <laughs> But, in um, fact, I might have to disappear before that because we're talking about cats tonight, and I've just realised our cats are soon to be fed, and one of them is is shut in the bedroom, so I might have to go and let her out. Oh, okay, all right. And, <laughs> Otherwise, she'll miss her food. I've just remembered that, so we'll have to see if I if I disappear. That's the reason. Okay, okay, we'll take that on board. I'm sure yeah. everybody will for, will forgive you for. for <laughs> and I might uh, have a wee as well while I'm letting her out. Yeah, feeding cats as well as um so. <laughs> Yeah, given given the thumbnail, um, what are you saying that you, all your cats have got full driving licenses? Is that what you're getting at there, or? Well, they're probably better at driving than me these days. I, I would I'd imagine. I mean, we might be joined by one of the cats. I don't think we'll be joined by a car. <laughs> oh, good. Not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a, a, a quick reminder that uh, my YouTube channel is the best place to um, to see this in terms of interacting with the rest of the chat. And that we don't uh, make people pay in order to get your views on the screen. And I'm sure you're going to have quite a lot of views about this topic because we're talking about um, whether domesticated other animals should be um, not used at all, I suppose, isn't it, Ronnie? That, so, uh, we'll, yes, we'll get, yes, that's we'll going to come up. Yeah. Yep. We'll get onto that. So, all right. So, we're still alive. So, let's go. You see, see this, Ronnie. You, um, Michael's got it all, all nailed down. You're just yeah, that's, aging your blood yeah, that's, decides not to behave. That is, that, yeah, that, that's that. That is that kind of is 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 quite true. That I, can I, be I, true. I mean, Louise has Louise has got these kind of incontinence pants that she's worn on some of the actions she's gone on, like where she's decided to glue herself to things and and stuff. Oh, so so you're, you're using them now. Yeah? <laughs> I might in the end have to have to borrow some of those. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think I think Michael's uh, right there. You know, yeah. I, I've uh, always been a big. Um, it's funny I was thinking about this earlier on, totally unconnected. But um, I've always been a big fan of the Goons. You know, the Spike Milligan. Oh goons, yes, and, yes, yeah, all, all that. Because I was thinking about uh, political correctness. And I was thinking about how, obviously, over the, over over time, when you think about people like um, Bernie Manning and you, you know, all all the kind of stuff in the seventies and, and all that. Um, Comedians, for example, stand-up comedians have, have, have got less and less they can talk about in, in a way now because it's not seen as PC, right? Um, but the one thing that it can still talk about is speciesism. And, he, and even extreme harm to other animals still gets a big laugh and everything. And oh, so yes. That, yeah. Yes. So, yes. You know, they, they can't talk about racism or sexism so much. No. Although a, a lot do. I mean, Ricky Gervais still... still tells his rape jokes and stuff you know so um it's still it's still there uh, but uh, but i was thinking about the goons and in relation to what michael said that the, the big baddie in the goons was called the red bladder so that's what that's what, <laughs> that's, what that's what that's what remind reminded yeah. me of, of that okay so um let's uh put this screen up and see where we are Okay, now yes, um, um, a recent article in the Independent here in the UK. I think it may have been in other publications as well, where there's been research into you know diets fed to cats. Uh, research has looked at responses from um, one thousand three hundred sixty nine cat cat owners. It says. I mean, I don't like to, I don't really like the phrase owners in relation to no. other animals. I suppose legally, is that the number? The case, oh, but, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, but th they were asked to um, report about or well, cats in in their household. You know, some had cats. The majority had cats fed on uh, meat based diets, 
and there, I think it was about nine percent had cats that were fed on a vegan diet, and they um, uh, and, and they had to report about the uh, the health of those cats. And um, the, uh, the the leader of the study is actually a, a, a vet who promotes vegan diets for cats. Uh, uh, a guy called Andrew Knight, who's a, a visiting lecturer, he's a lecturer at the University of Winchester. Yeah, he's and a he's visiting been... lecturer, isn't it? But I mean, that's going to be a problem, though, isn't it? In terms of the well, I think some you know some people might say, oh yeah, you know, the the, the guy that kind of led the study was vegan, so he's going yeah, to be a vegan biased. vet. Yeah. But, you know, it kind of depends on you know how accurately the results were were reported, and and he, and he do said, you, for do every... you have a problem with with vegan diets? You know that, that yeah yeah that. I, I i mean i'd soon i i i'd sooner see it described as a, a plant-based diet or a vegan friendly mm. diet because of course um you know veganism is a philosophy so so uh it it kind of can can lead to a bit of confusion when you know when we talk about vegan diets because we already have uh, you know a, a big problem with thinking that veganism is just a diet so we Kind of yeah, really we don't, we don't want to. Um, yeah, we don't want to give any fuel to that. I, fact, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I yeah. try not to use the, the the phrase vegan diet or vegan food. Uh, now, I, I I tend to I tend to say vegan friendly in 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 terms yeah, of food. It's, it's, it's for it's true from Joanna that uh, anti vegans don't, um, don't don't like the idea that cats can thrive on, on plants. Well, the, the, the thing is, you see what what. What people need to realize is what you know the, the food that cats are i mean first of all cat, cats aren't native to um to to, to the uk anyway I mean, they're not native to the usa they're not native to most countries in the world they come from the near east they were first domesticated uh in or domesticated in egypt four thousand years ago they come from that part of the world they're kind of what, what could be described as kind of perhaps the near east um and uh so f first of all they're not they're not native to to this country secondly the food that they're fed anyway is isn't at all similar to the food that they they eat in their natural environment they, they li live on kind of small birds no, like like tuna and, and dolphin and or, or a, whatever a they get they're, not gonna, they're not going to go yeah. in the sea and 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 pull down a huge tuna or, or jump on the back of a, a cow and eat a cow or <laughs> or, 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 or 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 any or even a chicken, you know. They're not, you know. Most cats wouldn't be able to tackle a chicken, but that's the food they're given. So the food they're given doesn't coincide with the food they'd have in there, you know. In, in no, this in, is in this is what makes the conversation skewed, isn't yeah. it, Ronnie? When people yes. talk about yeah. what's yeah. natural and what's, I mean, like, I mean, what what is natural about about the modern day? N nothing. You know? as, 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 as soon as. You know, you know, how far back do you want to go when you talk about natural? Do you want to go back to when we lived in caves? And 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 as soon as somebody invented the wheel, that would have been unnatural, wouldn't it? You, you know what I mean? No, that's not natural inventing the wheel. We need to kind of, you know, live without that. Yeah, the, the first wheel no. was square, apparently. This this person <laughs> missed out on a on a trick. Um yes. what, what do you think, <laughs> what do you think about is is the touring situation? Resolved now, then, Ronnie. Well, yes. I mean, I mean, what happens is because, um, uh, I mean, our cats have, um, uh, you know, so, some of their a percentage of their food is plant based, is one of the plant based um, uh, foods, and that's supplement with taurine. So you can, you know, that that's that's been, you know, the the, the, the food the food is like, you know. You know, for, for your kind of average diet, you know, the the the, the it seems that the 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 uh, the plant based food for for cats is is just as adequate as the um as as the meat based food, and I think this you know this kind of survey bears that out, uh, because he said and Andrew Knight said that for every single general health indicator studied, these cats had better outcomes when fed vegan diets. And, yeah, it, uh, it was um, that was that was a phrase that was used a lot during this thing. But go, let's go back to the setup. I mean, like um, people are going to say Andrew Knight is biased, and then in relation to this bit that we can see here, let me just pick it out. Is that uh, a survey of cat owners, and as you said, ninety nine percent um, of them 
was supposed to be vegan. No, um, not yeah, nine, 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 yeah, no, I think it was nine percent. Yeah, yeah, based, were, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah a yeah. theory of cat owners found that those who have fed their cats vegan diets tended to report fewer visits to the vet and less medication use. Now, yes. it struck me reading that, Ronnie, given the fact that who was the kind of leader of the research, how people are going to go, ah, well, that's because people knew what what he wanted them to say so if you're a vegan activist and you're filling in this survey you're bound to you're bound to minimize it because you want to make it look good i mean possibly whether or not the people were vegan activists that had the cat i mean i, I i'm sure they would have been people who were who were vegan or at least plant-based that had these cats otherwise why would the cats be fed uh, uh, on a plant-based diet so they would have been but whether or not they'd be activists i, I, I don't know but it, but it's still, yeah, it kind of it's it, it, it's still interesting. And of course, he, he also said that um, he says switch to, to vegan diets for pets. Um, once again, pets is a word I don't like either. But mm. it could have enormous benefits for the planet, um, with major savings in greenhouse gases, land and fresh water use, and food energy. And of course, that's true. I mean, of course, the main benefit would be to the animals that are killed. In order for the cats to eat them, wouldn't it? Yeah, not killed. Yeah, so that that's um, that's your little, that's a general kind of finding highlighted there. Which yes, is, yes, yeah, mentioned yeah. mentioned a couple of times. So um, it's interesting, as Joanna said, though there's still a lot of pushback because I remember when the first um, plant based cat food came out, it, there was a lot of controversy within the vegan community, and and just total dismissal outside of it and taurine was was talked about a lot and the people who manufactured the first ones were saying well yeah we know about taurine that's why we've we've added it and it's totally balanced and it's totally nutritious yeah and everything and um in in terms of of um the plant-based one being better it's when you think about what the flesh-based ones are which are kind of like Slaughterhouse scrapings. Yeah, there's there's the scrapings from slaughterhouse floor, but 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 even the um the flesh baits ones, they, they a lot of them contain quite a lot of um, vegetable protein. You know, they're kind of supplementing vegetable protein. They're not entirely flesh based. Oh, you mean in 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 the recipe, as it were? You mean in in the recipe in 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 oh, the tins? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's used that's used as part of the of the of the meat based. Uh, cat food as well but what i've kind of i i think my, my kind of my sort of problem really with the um plant-based uh, food for cats is isn't whether or not it's it's okay for them because i'm 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 pretty convinced it is okay for them and they can live healthily on it um i think the difficulty is just that it seems to me that there are a lot of cats that just just won't eat it and when we've experienced that with with ours which is why we we were only able to give them a percentage of their food that's mixed in, which is the, you know, which is the, you know, the plant-based stuff because and I think it, it maybe is to do with the smell of it because cats, um, uh, cat sense of smell is, 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 is many times um, more powerful than ours, not as powerful as the sense of smell of dogs, but it's still very powerful. The mm. sense of taste isn't, isn't as strong as ours. So they, they go very much on smell. And so if the food kind of doesn't really smell right, they kind of won't eat it. And I think that's a difficulty that they kind of need to, I think, do something about the smell of it to make it more attractive to many cats. Well, you say you say attractive. I think it might be the other way around from our point of view because obligate carnivores, they can eat the kind of, you know, almost rancid stuff that we couldn't tolerate, right? Yeah. But, 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 they're, but they're okay with it, which, which is often why they'll take it in get what they need from it and then vomit it back out again, which is why domesticated cats often vomit is because yeah. it's kind of a natural function that they can take in kind of rotten food, if you like, get get some nutrients from it and then expel it, you know. And, and then at the other end as well, because this was in Diet for New America, the um, an obligate carnivore's colon is very smooth. It's just like a, a little shoot, whereas whereas ours, it's, it's all kind of curved and puckered and everything. So uh, in, in terms of getting rid of the excreta, it just gets shoved straight out. And because mm. the idea of an obligate carnivore is get it in, deal with it and get it out. Whereas we don't have to do that. 
because we're not we're not obligate carnivores, mm. you know. So that that's that's one kind of uh, big difference. But going back to your point, Ronnie, maybe they've got to make it smell a bit more awful from our point of view. Yeah, I think so because I mean, I mean the, the kind of the cat food in the tins often smells that really awful. You don't don't want to get too close to it because it, you know it's, it smells so strongly, doesn't it? And it's not not you know that particularly pleasant smell, particularly for for, for vegans. Uh, so, and I think that's the, the the problem because if 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 cats don't recognise it as food, they're not going to eat it. Like if you put lettuce in front of a cat, the cat wouldn't eat lettuce. They need to recognise it as food. And I think there are quite a few cats that don't recognise the plant based food as food. And so the manufacturers, I think, need to do something about smell. Yeah, but what but what about the kibble stuff? I mean, that's not very smelly, is it either? You know, the flesh based ones. Um. I it's not no I don't think it's as smelly as the it's not smelly as the the stuff in cans but I think it still probably does have a because the thing is if 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 the cats are eating that but not eating the uh, not eating the um the plant based stuff then that 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 really I think has to, has to uh, be to do with smell because that's how they determine you know what what is food and what isn't. Yeah, just just uh, as a little aside, uh, Gen Jennifer's eye is caught by the the little car, so uh, it says oh, yeah. um, <laughs> new small small electric vehicles suitable for the elderly. So here we are, Ronnie. Oh, that's it's not. Oh, oh, yeah, I'll have to get one of those. I was just wondering if it might be a there might be a cat in that car, like in the other one. Uh, it, it, look, it looks about the the right size for a cat. <laughs> kind of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? So, should we move on to the next one? The next one, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I need to do a bit of shenanigans to get it on. So, hang on a second. Um, mm. uh, just a technical point, people, is that um, we've got a heck of a lot of um, of things queued up to go, and so um, it just means that I've got to stop the screen and start it again. So, bear, bear with us on, on that. It can't can't be helped. Um, ba -ba -bum. keep your cats indoors. There, there it is. Right. It's it's interesting when when you get the list on Streamyard, it's not the same as as across the top of your screen. So you can't go. You've got to kind of search the list, unfortunately, which is a bit of a drag. Anyway, this is just me complaining. So um, there you go. Right. Okay. So this is a, an interesting um, article. This one. What did you get out yeah. of this one, Ronnie? Ah, this well, this is obviously um, this is from the Guardian. The Guardian contains quite a lot of news um, about Australia. I don't know whether it's kind of also published in Australia, and that's the reason why. Um, and obviously, this is from their website. And uh, there's, there's, as the headline says, there's a big push in by conservationists in Australia for people to actually keep their cats indoors, and the reason is because the huge toll. You know, for the conservationists, the main problem there is the huge toll that uh, cats take on um, on native animals. Um, there's been a survey uh, done by the Species Council, Invasive Species Council in Australia, suggests that roaming roaming pet cats kill 546 million animals every year. This is in Australia. Of which 323 million are native um, Australian animals, so it's seen as a big problem there, and um, it's 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 not just the you know people's you know cats they they have in their homes. It's there's big feral uh, cat population in Australia, and, and they're kind of also it's sort of regarded as a problem by conservationists and the environment minister there has un unveiled a, uh, a draft national plan to tackle feral cats, um, acknowledging that they're, the, that they're the main threat to native wildlife. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the Minister Tanya Plibersek, I think her name is, she, mm. she's also you know, said that domestic cats have to properly manage as well. Now, now these measures to um, tackle the feral cats... Uh, you know, include uh, fenced off areas and baiting and shooting. So, 
yeah, you know, culling, isn't it? It's part of the plan to, to you know, to kill. Yeah, to but kill there the seems to be some terrible. tension here, Ronnie, between. So, so who is? I mean, probably both. But who is the real problem? Because some of this is saying that actually it's the feral cats that are the real problem. But then the the the, um, the headline is keep your domesticated ones. Yeah, indoor. because they recognise as as being a big big problem as well. Because further on, there's um, um, uh, Professor Sarah uh, Lege or Ledge of the Australian uh, National we, University. We've got some uh, great says, names. In yeah, today. they have. Yeah, yeah. Um, they said it's 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 it, that uh, obviously these these cats hunt when 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 allowed out of people's homes. Um, uh, they they hunt at a lower lower rate than feral cats. But because they live in a higher density in the towns and suburbs, yeah, that's this bit here, isn't they, it? They, 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 there's a greater toll on yeah. on on the on the free there's living times animals. More animals per square kilometer. Yeah, uh, yeah, fifty times more animals per square kilometer in urban areas than feral cats kill in natural environments. And 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 she she also says that because a lot of the um, the cats kept in people's homes aren't aren't neutered. That they'll have, um, they may have litters that will contribute to the feral. Uh, yeah, that, that's the bit or, there. And yeah. then this is the bit that I think you mentioned at the beginning. I mean, like the numbers are, are, are massive, aren't they? You know, five hundred and forty-six million. It's 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 it's, it's absolutely a huge, huge, huge number. Um, uh, and this, uh, when they talk about cat containment, I, I think that means people, people either keeping their cats. As in, you know, indoors totally, or or keeping them indoors at night when they're probably more likely to be going out hunting, and um, that uh, um, the uh, where, where the states in Australia have have kind of taken those measures, it's led to a dramatic reduction in the number of birds, reptiles, and marsupials uh, killed by cats. So that. Does seem to have worked where it's been inflated, where people have been kind of, you know, I, yeah. I dare say that if, if someone's found to let their cat out, there there's a legal penalty for them. That would yeah, be. What, what, what do you think about this bit, Ronnie? Because it says most animals, an estimated eighty-five percent killed by pet cats. We just have to use their language, unfortunately, uh, yeah. are not brought home because um, I can hear a lot of people going, "Oh well, you know, my Timmy n never kills anyone," and you know. Um, on the grounds that they've they've never they've never brought brought anyone back uh, yes. dead, and then you've got the other issue about whether they're just out there because they're fed, they're just killing the other animals. Yeah, they're the killing. Kill, they kill them and don't eat them because it's, it's, them, it's, yeah. it's their kind of instinct to kill them. But then they're kind of not hungry, so they don't so they, they don't eat them. And did you find any research on that on that particular thing? About how many would be killed but not eaten? Well, th this is this is according to um, a guy called Jack Goff, who's the advocacy manager at the Invasive Species Council. So I'd imagine there's probably some sort of research that 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 backs it up. Yeah, uh, although it's not mentioned. Yeah, um, you see what what we did in Liverpool was uh, there was a cat in our care called um, Chowder, and um, she was. A devil for killing voles and um so i noticed that she would torment uh the voles mercilessly and then eventually kill them and then leave them and so we stopped feeding her any flesh products and we actually started feeding them with happy dog believe it or not the vegan version of happy dog this is back in the 80s and then of course what she did then is she killed the voles really quickly and and ate them and mm. so, although it's utilitarian, obviously, we thought that was the best solution in in uh, the sense that she was like, there's a phrase called meat hungry. Yes. So was, yeah. And and then she'd be eating those foals instead of eating other animals, wouldn't she, if you were fit? But did she eat any of the happy dog? Yes. Uh, yes, she did, yeah. Ah, that's that that's 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 kind of quite unusual. I, I mean, yes, I mean we've got um we've got a cat that eats digestive biscuits when they're dipped in tea. So the, don't, the cats really eat other things apart from meat, obviously. He's not called Ronnie, is he? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, no, no. I mean, I, 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 I certainly eat digestive biscuits when they're dipped in tea as well. But I always have to give some to uh, to Jazz, the cat who who, who likes the biscuits. Um, and and um, th this same guy, Jack Goff, he's also said that um, that cat containment is also beneficial for the cats themselves. Cats kept at home have lower vet bills. They don't get run over. They go, don't get injured at the same rate and live yeah. for up to 10 years longer than free roaming cats. I've seen quite a few memes shared by vegans saying all that lately. Yes. Yes. So. Although if you, if, if I find if I ever post anything uh, on Facebook, which I haven't done for quite a while, uh, regarding my views on that cat, cats should be kept as indoor animals. There's, it leads to like huge debate and kind of arguments. Yeah, but you can <laughs> understand it. I mean, they, they yeah. obviously, they, I mean, look at the language here, right? They, they, they say that um, those kept in live up to ten years longer than so-called free roaming cats. But a free roaming cat is more cat-like than those kept yes, in. Yes, but I, 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 I think, I think it's a question of like you know, weighing up pros and cons, um, you know, pe people will keep keep other animals in their homes, rats and mice and guinea pigs and rabbits, but those animals aren't allowed to, f those animals aren't allowed to free roam, are they? And it could be argued that, yeah, it'd be nicer for them to be able to free roam, but the reason why they're not allowed to free roam, because it's considered that the the benefits to them of free roaming are far out, out rate of, outweighed by the risks to them in various uh, yeah, ways there's, there's there's a there's a thing there's something called the case against pets coming up where yes. the, that argument is reversed right uh, 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 yes yes yeah um but it depends on yeah you, you kind of have to kind of sort of do that calculation of of kind of whether um yeah then, know, then kind of, uh, as it were being who they are uh, outweighs the risk of being who they are because obviously uh for other yeah animals, but you see I, I i i think the thing is they they can't really be who they are because they're actually if but they, they let can out, also being free living that's the point they're not being released into in, into what would be their natural habitat though and i mean it's going back to the same thing about you know when we talk about things being natural that the food that they're, they're, they're fed you know the meat food they're fed isn't isn't what might be termed their natural diet and also the environment into which they'd be released here in the outside world um yeah yeah but i yeah. i get that ronnie but yeah how, i mean like i've been critical and you probably you heard me recently been critical because there's some people in north america now who are starting to call other animals regardless of their age babies you know we're here to save the babies and i think that robs them of their autonomy and their agency and and the same would be the case that if they're free roaming, even in an unnatural situation, they're still then having to make decisions. So they've got much yes, more I think, agency. I think that's true, but I think you kind of you have to weigh everything up. You have to you you have to obviously weigh up the toll of the they would take on free living beings, you know, as, as an animal that's actually an introduced species. Um, and then secondly, also you know the danger. The, the danger to them i mean mean the environment here is full of dangers that wouldn't have existed in the natural environment from which they came there wouldn't be cars there wouldn't be cat poisoners there wouldn't be all the kind of other risks no no but I mean, if, if you ask, ask uh, um, activists who defend mink releases why they defend them they say well even though they're in a great deal of danger by being released that's what they would want they they, they assume right and so so it's kind of like you know the other side of the argument there. Well, I think I, I yeah, um, but I think it, it, to, to some extent you've got to kind of consider. I, I mean, we 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 kind of, in a sense, think for these animals, don't don't we? Like, for instance, when we take, you know, we'll take them to the vet to be treated for things. Well, you know, in the in in their kind of natural environment, that that wouldn't happen, would it? They'd probably just die. And and oh, like you know, recover. The, those animals, yeah, they may recover, but a lot of them probably, you know, that that kind of, you know, get these diseases or injured and stuff. You know, if there'd be no vet for them to be taken to, so 
already they're in what might be called like a highly unnatural environment in terms of like what would happen to them if they were like if they were kind if they were free living if they were you know allowed to kind of roam free without human interference um and so you know we're already kind of changing a hell of a lot about their lives in comparison to, to what yeah, those lives it, it, would it, be it's like it's difficult to to use uh, yeah. things natural and nature it, yeah it's difficult to say but well if, if you say if you say that that kind of but but it's it, it's that other people use it you see other 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 people use that's not natural that's not natural and i'd say you know for me that's not really a, a, a kind of word it's a difficult word to use because you know what is natural and what isn't natural and what does it mean anyway <laughs> you know you know what i mean any 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 kind of change that we make to anything could be argued to be not natural because we've kind of changed it from as it kind of was when it was left alone you know yeah. and i think you kind of have to weigh it up like we don't let you know you know it's like as i say we don't you know i'm sure if someone's got if someone's got a, like a someone's got a rat a, 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 hopefully a rescued rat we've we've had rescued rats at home before now for many years well we didn't just let them out in the garden to, to run free now if you said to if you said to to probably ask the question of 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 of, of, a, of a rat that was confined would you rather be confined or would you rather have freedom maybe they'd say we want freedom but what is the reason what is the reason why those rats weren't just loosed in into nature what was the reason for that it's because it was because it was considered that the risks to them of like just being allowed out it's like this thing with rabbits there's a big campaign now about where um by by kind of rabbit welfare organizations saying to people if you've got a like you know in inverted commas domestic rabbit you no longer want take that rabbit to a sanctuary do not release that rabbit into the wild because they say those rabbits aren't equipped to cope with life in the wild and they they they, they wouldn't survive for yeah, i do any i long... do worry i do worry yeah. a little bit ronnie yeah. about whether you know this kind of um treating other animals like babies and uh, but for all their lives i i uh, I, w I worry about that because it um it, d it doesn't kind of give them you know it's you know this idea of they need human superintendents as Richard Ryder, oh. um, Ryder said, and so I think yeah. I think that um, I think we need to be very critical about that kind of idea because uh, as much agency as they have, we ought to let them express it. Yes, but you see, what I'm saying is that we still we the, the whole the whole area of, of of animals like these animals being kept in in our home. You know, you know, for us as vegans, this is kind of something that's been imposed on us. Because had we, you know, ha had we had a, a, a certainly a vegan run society, well, you know, way back at the the time when that started happening to those animals, it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have done it because it would have been, uh, you know, against vegan principles to have kind of, you know, you know, kept those animals for ourselves. But that isn't what's well, happened. Well, question you know, about we vegan principles, which is about the feeding of other animals to them. And I mean, obviously, this is one of the major uh, points that vegans make. Species to feed them other animals doesn't align uh, with veganism. Now, this has been I, a kind of perennial argument. Yeah, I, 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 years, I, I, isn't it? yeah I, I think I think I think the difficulty with with that. I, I mean, that's an that's an argument for 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 kind of change in the situation whereby those animals um, uh, are in people's homes anyway, isn't it? You know, and that's and, and and that's eventually what we what we want. But I think the difficulty is say say someone has uh say a rescued cat or a rescued dog, they take that cat in and they find that that that, that animal just won't eat, um, will not eat the plant-based food, then what's that person to do? And this is, you know, that's that that's difficult, and 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 that is the case. And I've known a lot of cases where 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 well, you where know, the argument against that, Ronnie, yeah. is I, I've heard this argument before, and I think I've even said it myself. Is that when when oh he's a fussy eater, she you know she she's very picky and all that, and and you go okay, well wait three days, and she won't be. Isn't yeah, it but that doesn't. Mm, 
that that that's you know that's if say you put down a bowl of lettuce for a cat you could wait you could wait a thousand yeah, days that's not that's that's not valid it, though well, it? it's, it's it's yeah but it's whether it's it, it's whether whether the cat will actually consider that to be food and that once again goes back to their sense of smell and and, and that's why i argue that you know the vegan cat food manufacturers need to do something about making the food more palatable and and, yeah, and i think and, they could easily do that i don't i don't know kind of what the what the sort of difficulty is is yeah, in, as we in, said in, it, uh, that. more palatable for them might might be worse for us which might which might be an interesting one because they they might yeah. they might have been able to make it more palatable but then it wouldn't be popular with the humans then yeah but you see it's a, it, it, it's it, it's the the other animals in these circumstances that have got to come first and yes i mean i mean it, it, it is a it is a kind of a catch 22 situation really that's kind of been in imposed I, I suppose you know perhaps the answer is well we we'll just we we just won't have we just won't take in rescued animals as vegans just just don't don't take them in and just you know well campaign it's, we've, to always, we've always took the argument that it's it's hard not to i mean there's a bit of emotional blackmail quite, quite yeah often. yeah that's so. yeah that that's right but you see once having taken them in if, it, if you then discover that they just won't eat the plant-based mm. food what are you going to do because you, you, you either get you either let them starve or find them another home which would be, you know, it's difficult. And then that person's then going to feed them uh, animal products, aren't they? So it's a, it's a very, very difficult one. And once again, it's like the whole, you know, the whole nutrient and spaying thing. I mean, ideally, you know, that wouldn't happen. These animals would be in nature and they would, you know, they'd, they'd be able to breed. Um, but because that option doesn't, that option doesn't really, that option doesn't really exist. You know, we're forced to choose between the lesser of two evils, which is the, the new ring in Spain. But it doesn't sit easy, does it, with the vegan well, no, ethics? because on the face of it, it's a rights violation. Yeah, but you see what happens if you don't, if, if you don't, in, in reality, there isn't an alternative. Either these animals continue breeding and breeding and breeding, and, uh, you know, then a lot of them are going to suffer and, and die because of that, and it, it you know, yeah, well, 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 Deb said earlier mm. in, in, in the conversation that there's some interesting books about it. And as you know, I've, I've got a couple. This one here is uh, Fudge and Pets. Mm. But the, the, one that, the one that's really interesting is this one. And th this is actually a really difficult to read book because um, it's about the kind of exploitation of, of humans and other animals throughout the ages, a little bit like uh, one of David Nybert's books. But, but he goes into... Um, all the all the uh, neutering and spaying equipment, you know, and like when you do read it, you think, wow, you know, because you tend to think it's a really good thing, you know, kind of like across the board, and there's no downside to it. But there's some pretty downsides to it, and and, and he he does say quite interestingly because he goes through this big list of of equipment that they use, and I won't go through that, but but um, he then says farmers have to confront these instruments. Pet owners in the cities are able to look the other way. And I, I think that's right. I suppose if we knew more about the process. Of... Well, yeah, I suppose so. But I, I would imagine instruments used for any surgical operation, you know, even on humans. Yeah, but then you've got the volunteer thing then, haven't you? Yeah, you've got the volunteer thing. But once again, you see, we're, you know, we're in this situation of lesser of two evils, aren't yeah, we? That's, I know, yeah. That's been, fought, that and that's been imposed on us. Aren't you? Yeah. It's been imposed on us by species society, you know, and in, in, yeah. in, a, in a vegan run society. We would solve that problem by kind of not, you know, it, you it know, would these be a animals. Lot different. It would be just, a lot just different. Let me go back yeah. to this, Ronnie. It says here about um, uh, research um, described as based on shaky foundations. So I had a quick look at that, right? And and you know, th there's a lot of uh, argument about you know how many individuals we're talking about here. It seems to change um, over and over, and so. There seems to be some outrageous kind of, you know, people who want to kill them uh, have come up with some outrageous numbers, right? You know, mm. uh, whereas then there's been other studies which say that it's much less of a problem. And so I think that's what they're getting at with regard to see that some of the culling. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I think that I, I mean, there's a couple of things. First of all, that from a 
an ethical vegan point of view, like kill, killing these animals would be completely out, and, and we need to look at other ways. If we we felt the population needed to be controlled, we'd have to think about other ways of doing it that were non-lethal. And we we discussed this, didn't we? And uh, you know that fairly recently uh, when we were talking about the um, uh, the deer population, weren't we? And yeah, the idea certainly. of introducing wolves and you know to control the deer population. We were talking about that. Um, and and then also the whole question of like, kind of how much do we, you you know, these humans of course this problem is humans that took the cats to Australia along with other loads of non-native species to Australia like sheep and all rabbits. sorts, you know, rabbits, all sorts mm. of you know these humans took them there, you know, took them there to be exploited, didn't they? And um, it, it, it all it always is a running. It always is, and so so, so you know it's a problem caused by by humans yeah it always is you know now to what extent should we be um should we be trying to control non-native species anyway you know this is you know that's a, that's another you know kind of well, then, then you get then you get the arguments coming in from conservationists and ecologists and you know the ecological balance of, of areas and this kind of stuff and the disruption i mean we're, we're almost back to releasing uh minks into it, yes you know yeah 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 yeah, but I think we've got to argue for non-lethal met methods of like reducing their population, haven't we? I mean, that's already used on 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 feral cat colonies in this country, where they're, you know, where the cats are are humanely trapped, aren't they? They're caught and then then they're uh, they they're neutered and then returned to the colony. That's what you know. There are groups over here that do that, and and I'm, I'm sure in other countries as well. So that could be a that could be a solution to it. Right, so I've got your third um, thing lined up, uh, Ronnie, which we can we, we can put up, which is okay. uh, this, I think. Um, maybe we need to put it on the screen there. Yeah, you see, well, this is, you know, we've just talked about Australia, and it's good, really, because we've had something from another country, because, you know, this is very, tends to be very UK-centric, which is very understandable as, well, it, well, you're, you know, we're, we're kind of, I'm in the UK and you're near the UK. <laughs> Um, but uh, uh, well, I'm in Ireland, you're near Ireland. I'm near Ireland, yeah, yes, yeah. um, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, the, you know, this this is this is an article from the uh, uh this, this is uh, an RSPB from the RSPB, yeah, RSPB website, right, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's about how many, how many birds do cats kill in you know, here in the UK. And, and well, they've said that uh, cats kill ninety-two million prey items. In other words, other animals. Oh um, yeah, I, I I saw that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not. It's yeah. very, very kind of yeah. Yeah. Um, other uh, over spring and summer, uh, of which around twenty-seven million are birds. So that gives some indication of the toll that uh, that that cats take in this yeah, country. Yeah, but then it says here that. Uh, on an annual basis, the fi the figures vary, but I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying that all all of these things are, are, are based on research. Which yeah, yeah, they're estimates. They can't be... count every single one. And yeah, know. it all um, seems to be a little bit kind of a lot, a lot of kind of leeway one way or the other kind of things. Yes, yeah. but um, so so that's the figure. And then um, there's another an, an, another article. The next one is from the BBC. Um, website. Right. You, you, you want to go to that one straight away, do you? The okay. next one, yeah, because that was yeah. only just. I just wanted yeah. to give a figure for, for for the UK for um um for the. Oh, just the one job. about the MP, yeah. Or the, the MPs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I just want to make sure I I'm getting them in the right order for you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So yeah. Here we go. This is from this is from earlier this year, actually January of the BBC website and, and 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 basically the situation over here is is that if if someone um you know on the road in a vehicle um hits uh an animal that's considered that's classed as a working animal and that and and that includes dogs but it's also horses cows mules sheep pigs and goats any of those animals, if someone hits an animal like that, they have to. It has to be. It has to be reported to the police, presumably. And is it, um, is it the police? 
that animal yes I, I yes i think it is the police and that animal has to be given um veterinary treatment the you know if that it, it doesn't but i think that's the um yeah i think it does have to be i think it does have to be reported to the police um, I wonder if these vets are in favour of uh, people having to report if they if they find a knife and fork inside a pig. Well, it, ah, exactly. Yes, I know. I know. That, that found a dead animal in your fridge. You phoned the police. Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't apply to cats or what they call wild animals. Um, so uh, there, there's Did been a, make any difference, Ronnie. This. Well, it just means that uh, it just means that. Um, uh, Measures have to be taken if 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 the animal is 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 um, injured but but still alive. The measures do have to be taken to get the animal veterinary treatments. Um, I mean, I had a case uh, uh, years ago. Um, who pays for that then? In this idea, well, I think I I I I I, I kind of honestly don't know. I th I think the the vet would the vets would probably have to take the. It on themselves, unless there was some kind of fund by which that would that would be paid. But well, you see, they not might do that, and then a driver's yeah. not going to do it. And the so driver, no, no. Well, but but it, it does. Well, I, what what happened? I mean, I I I was involved in in a in a case over, over here quite some years ago when I lived in when I lived in Luton when I was I think probably in my twenties that I was you know I I, I I was kind of driving along and, and I saw there was an injured cat at the side of the road and i called the police and the police came and said oh sorry we can't do anything if, if that was a dog we'd take the dog to the vet i mean maybe the police pay but it because because that's a cat we can't do anything so i rushed the cat to a vet that i knew and the vet treated the cat i think sadly she was you know she had to be put to sleep because she's too badly injured but at least she didn't suffer anymore and he then started a campaign to get the to get the police in that area to to actually respond if if, if, it, if it was a cat to get the police to take action and they actually agreed he actually so just in that 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 particular police force in that area where cats were knocked over on the road they actually treated the cat the same as they would a dog and they would take the cat to a vet yeah here's, an, here's another just, element of it the idea of microchipping because that, that's just dogs at the moment isn't it um yeah i think that's just dogs and 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 the law's coming in uh coming in next year that uh people have to have their cats uh, uh microchipped as well yeah um that's coming in but uh but the important thing about this in terms of and and, and there was a petition to get cats given the same status as dogs in terms of you know when they 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 they're hit by a vehicle and over a hundred thousand people signed an uh, an, an e-petition, which is like a kind of officially government petition. If you get over a hundred thousand signatures on one of these government e-petitions, it, it kind of uh, has to be debated in Parliament. Um, you know, you know what? In a general matter, though, Ronnie, I get the impression that until all this is being done by vegans, we're never really going to get no. Because what they do is they debate it in Parliament and then they say no to it. Yeah, but, but mean, yeah, we, but we, look you at know, all the language. I mean, yeah, you know, all this, all this stuff about Britain being a nation of animal lovers. Yeah, again. I don't, and but I kind of talk about vermin and stuff in terms yeah, of, of the work. That's and, it. I, I mean, I kind of have a little bit of a suspicion about the e position. I mean, I've signed them myself and I've collected signatures for them myself. But I kind of think, is this a way of like diverting people thinking, oh, we can do something effective? We can sign this e petition, so we'll do that instead of doing something kind of more more effective. If you see well, what that, I mean, that's been the argument against yeah. um, petitions for decades. Yeah, yeah kind of argument against. But I mean, sometimes, yeah, you know, there are the rare, rare occasions. I've actually got a cat. Join me now, Misty. So, okay. do, you want, do you want to go and drive in a little car? Do you, Misty? Going to be one of those millions of cats involved in a collision with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she might well be. Um, but. Uh, uh, but the, the Cats Matter, a, a, a group which we've been campaigning on this issue, uh, they claim that 230,000 cats a year are involved in road collisions and that um, a quarter of those accidents, I'm not sure they're always accidents, actually, classed as accidents, but um, a quarter of them are immediately fatal. And in yeah. the other three quarters if, if, of cases, 
cats could be saved if they receive emergency veterinary treatment. Yeah, on that point, Ronnie, do you remember that guy? Um, he had a fancy name, Churchill or something like that. Uh, that the guy who was a, a hunt master and then he kind of turned. Oh, oh, yeah, Robert Churchill. Yeah, is that? Yeah, okay. Well, a well master of. Yeah. Yeah, he wrote the yeah, well, book, A Master of Foxhound Speaks, didn't he? he wrote a, that's it, yeah. And he yeah. said he said that one of the things that started to sicken him about hunting was that the hunters had some kind of bloodlust and uh, and said that if you're driving along and you saw um, another animal on the road, you would actually aim for them rather rather than trying to yeah, avoid Yeah, that, doesn't, avoid that them. doesn't at all surprise me. That doesn't at all surprise me that they would do that. Yeah. But that just gives an indication of the, you know that the, you know the the kind of casualties of 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 cats on the roads here in the UK. That's the reason that's there. And then the next one is about. Well, first of all, against... I think this cat here is saying, "I love you, mate," to the car. Yeah, kind of. It's a bit like it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah I'll punch so, your tires. You, you, you want you want the next one, dear? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's bring us back down to this then, and then get rid of that. Okay, keeping me busy today, Ronnie. Yes. <laughs> uh, now this one is um ah right now. This is a really this is the most interesting article that I Yeah, I, this was I, this, I this was this was very interesting. It's about yeah, it was, yeah. You know, Let me take various it various specialists in sort of animal studies and yeah, so another uh, another bunch of um funny old names in this one as well. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh there's a guy called Troy Vitesse, who's an environment historian. Specialised in animal studies, he said, if if people really cared about animals, we would only engage in rescues and helping animal sanctuaries um, and wildlife rehabit rehabilitation, uh, things that we find fulfilling, but that also help the animal. Uh, instead, we only like relationships where they are they are easy, where the the pets are well maintained, where we can hire a dog walker, where it impinges as little as possible on our life. And we are extracting as much emotional support as we want from them. Yeah. Now, yeah, that, it, that, that, it's selfish a selfish relationship. Selfish, I think that yeah. is the case that I think yeah. most people who have animals as like so-called pets, their motivations are selfish. They yeah, have but, but this. This article really does. Um, it's in the Guardian, as you can see. Yeah. This article really does bring up some profound ethical yeah. um, issues, like for example, whether other animals can really ever have a good life in a human home so that brings up that point that you made um before yes yes uh, and talked about um about this person's i think um they had um a parrot parrots are clever and social she needs to be entertained all the time otherwise she really is suffering he sees yeah. a possible different life for her she could be living with her friends and family in a forest very happy but she is not. That's really unfair. Yes. Yeah. But again, more yeah. dangerous. That's the argument. Yes. I, I, I mean, they should be. They, they should live in groups. I mean, I I, I have a friend who who runs a uh, sanctuary, and 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 she has uh, quite a lot of parrots and similar birds there that you know obviously, you know, have been rescued from various places, and 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 but they they live communally. You know, there's lots of them living together in like big enclosures. So although obviously they don't have the you know kind of have the freedom that they we would get in their natural habitat, they do have the companionship of other birds, and so you know it's very sad an animal that's, the, that's kind of like a, a sort of flock animal, you know, kept on his or her own. You know, I, I think that's very sad. Yeah. So are you? Um, I mean, are you taken by this, for example, um, about um, evidence that pet ownership is not about the, the other animals and i think um you know obviously those who regard other animals as pets it's probably not i mean i've used phrases like um living ornaments and stuff and, yeah. and i think yeah. there's quite a bit of that you know I not think least I, because i used to help out a, a sanctuary yes and, um, I, I, yeah i think if those animals aren't rescues then you then then i'd say that is the case you know because you know, the person hasn't hasn't you know taken that animal into the home to kind of save the animal from from death or suffering. Yeah. Taken Do you that remember that time that? when I mentioned that um, uh, Leslie from the Freshfield Animal Rescue uh, she took a call and um, 
the, the, this woman on the line was saying, oh, we've, ju we've just redecorated and we want a different coloured dog. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? Ab ab absolutely. I mean, we, we, you know, we had the same problem when we used to kind of, you know, we, we rescued and like rehomed cats like you know, some years ago. That people want particular colours, you know. They, they, you know, people didn't want black and white cats or, or, or really black cats. They wanted like tabbies. They wanted ginger cats. So once again, there's this kind of, sort of like colour prejudice amongst people, um, or or a lot of people, you know, like kind of regarding cats as well. Um, but um, there's another interesting thing here, and, and and also about the kind of, you know, downside of um of having you know people having you know animals in their homes so-called pets is i mean it once again mentions the the you know the the, the amount of like free living beings beings killed by cats uh there's all says, that argument about covid as well you know that, yeah you know? yeah that's right people we all, we have a lot of animals that. they had animals for companionship in covid and then when covid receded they the sanctuaries became inundated with discarded animals, didn't they? Because it was just totally selfish to keep people company. Yeah, I, th I think I got a, a big lesson ab about the attitude of humans towards other animals when the yeah. the, tun the tunnel opened. You know, the, the the tunnel that connects Britain to France. Yes, and, and then all the animal sanctuaries around Kent suddenly found themselves inundated with other animals who had been thrown out on the motorway. As as families went on holiday, and oh, then, oh, yeah, 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 and they would they would yeah. they would buy new ones when they came back. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we've got we've got a cat who, uh, well, and you know some of the kittens she had, uh, where some people moved away and they just left her behind. Just left the cat behind, and she got pregnant, had kittens, and you know she actually had other kittens. And she dug a little, oops, not my microphone. She dug a little nest in. Um, someone's compost heap which was very clever because it'd be warm and and had a litter of kittens and someone just left it behind i didn't i couldn't be bothered to take yeah, well, there you go. See, the point is agency she she had agency and she used it right well yes i mean she used her you know like intelligence to kind she of use her noggin she, yeah and and you know a lot yeah. of people and vegans are, vegans are guilty of this they'll almost like almost like suggest that other animals are completely useless if we're not in charge, looking oh, after no, them, no. making every single decision, and all mm. that, yeah. Oh, oh no, absolutely no, no. She she did the, you know the very best she could uh, for them. But there's a but, but the, another interesting thing about you know people having these animals in the home. It's like the you know um, the carbon footprints. You know, like a lot of the you know the, like the, the the you know the 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 animal products that a lot of these animals eat. And it says if 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 U.S. pets, in other words, like animals kept as so-called pets in the USA, were a country, they would rank fifth globally for meat consumption, uh, oh. ahead of Germany. <laughs> so that's that's kind of frightening, isn't it? Really, in terms of like, you know, the toll that that takes on, you know, on other animals, and also in, in you know, in terms of the environment. Yeah, well, that's why um, Paul Watson claimed that um, the reason that he kind of got uh, the Sea Shepherd um, ships to, to go vegan when they were during operations is because of of, of that kind of the toll, you know, um, especially of sea life by so-called pets, you know. Oh, oh, absolutely, yes, yes, yes. That's that. Yeah, that. I mean, that's that's very true, <laughs> and. Um, uh, you know, once again, it's something that's only going to be solved until we're, you know, we vegans are in charge of things, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen Have you seen that little bit there? Because that is related to, um, I don't know whether you've, you've seen this. I think we might have talked about it a couple of weeks ago, where um, a lot of um, vet nurses have, have said that they're, they're getting upset by the, the number of humans who won't stick around while, while the, their other animal you know, he's killed. Yes. Or put to sleep. And and um saying, you know, at the time when they need them the most, they just won't do it. Again, yeah. again pointing out the kind of thesis of this, which is that it's all about us really. 
Yeah, because that's a you know I don't want to have to you know go through that the myself. The trauma of, of watching, yeah, but yeah, yes, uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Then again, I imagine a lot of people might do that with regard to the human relatives. I, 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 I think there's too. Yeah, I, I think it might be that, that there are some people that might just find it too distressing. Um, you know, there could that could that could be a motivation. Um, but nevertheless, I, you know, I, I've I've always been there whenever I've had to take, uh, you know, one one of our animals to the vet, you know, to kind of to be put to sleep. So to speak, I've I've always I've always stayed always. I never yeah, think well, I mean, it is a horrible experience, but it yeah. should yes. it should yeah. be you know yeah. you should you should be prepared to do it. But but funny enough, it's made me it's made me feel that I've got no right to fear death. You know, right. it's made me feel it's made uh, me uh, feel. How, how, how does that work? Because I've had to decide that those animals be um you know be put to sleep i've had to decide that the the lives of those animals come to an end and i've watched them you know pass away and you know they you know they've gone you know they've gone quietly they've gone that they've they they've they've kind of gone without complaining in a, in a, in a sense and that's just kind of made me feel that i that i don't have a right to fear death and i don't fear death whatsoever and, you know, I fear that if I was going to be killed in a horrible, painful way, I wouldn't want that. But the actual the actual fact of death, I don't fear at all. And I feel I've got no right to because of that. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. 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 Th this this bit I've highlighted is that bit that you talked about if uh, US so-called pets were a country, that bit. But it also, it also mentions that, uh, you know, the plant-based diet uh, research as well that has come out. Yes, so that's included in that. It's, it's, it's a very kind of, it, it's a very sort of all-encompassing article, this. And as you said, yes, it is. It, yeah, it's kind oh, it's, of it's very, definitely the best one. It's really very, very, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's very, very good. Do you, do you think research like this that is coming through all the time now, do you think that's changing the attitude of people within the, I mean, is there a less of a debate within the vegan community now, or is it still the same as it always was? I'm not really sure because it's not something I'm engaged in for a while. I kind of, you know, um, it's quite a long time since I've been engaged in, in, in a discussion along these lines with, with other vegans, so I'm not really sure. I, yeah. I would hope that attitudes have improved. Yeah, you would think so. The worrying part of it, though, Ronnie, is the fact that it kind of teases out all the, even in the vegan community, all the kind of cat and dog lovers, for want of a better word, they're, yeah, they're that's the ugly a lot of people horse, like that, the know. horse riders. Yeah. So. Um yeah, it's people that don't quite get it, really. You know, don't quite get what veganism well, is about. And then a lot we're back to the, the pri uh, privileged species that we've talked about before. Yeah, yeah, that that that's it. It's like animal, you know, I, I kind of often use this phrase animal liberation, but not too much. Yeah. You know, to cover quite a few scenarios where, where vegans don't don't kind of totally get it and we're actually coming on to we're actually kind of coming on to that as well with our next news item yeah okay let, let's just have a look at this bit though because yeah go, going back to the cat and dog people in the vegan community they would really go for this um top bit which is um let let the house be obvious that, that there's a cat and, and there's dogs in in other, in other words full of hair you don't don't worry about having animal hair on your clothes. Uh, you know the the house is going to smell like yes, um, yeah. You know, I mean, like um, there's there's a comedian I can't remember his name now, but um, he uh, Milton Milton Jones. He he, he says, are there are there any pet pet owners in 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 the room? And people say, yeah. And he goes, your 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 house stinks. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so but they would say, yeah, well. You know that that's be, that's because of the fact. Yeah, that, you know um, he's he, he's the guy with all, all, all the kind of fancy shirts, isn't he, Milton? Jones? Yeah, and, and the and the wild hair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he's got a strange. Because I, I I really like his style of comedy, but Louise absolutely hates it. All right, yeah, it's de it's deadpan, isn't it? It's, it's like one line. It's it's kind of like one liners, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's like deadpan yeah, I kind of I kind of like it, but yeah. I think it's like you know. It's, what it's, what it's about this bit? Like, I mentioned this bit yeah. before we came on air. 
Um, seeing a Yorkshire Terrier dressed as Wonder Woman, and I'm pretty sure that it's not a dog's idea of a good time. Um, you were saying no. that some of it's okay and some of it's not, perhaps, yeah? Well, well, I think, yeah, it kind of, if, you know, we were talking about, you know, some, some people have bandanas on the dogs, don't they? And I don't think that dogs are particularly bothered about that. But I think if they're dressed up in loads of different stuff, I, I, I would imagine that the that's big thing on TikTok thing. now, you know, Ronnie. Yeah, yes, yes, I've heard it's a craze. It's, it, it, it's not good. And once again, people are doing that. People aren't doing that at all for the benefit of the dog. They're, do, they're, they're doing it for their own, like, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, there's sometimes dogs, you know, I've seen people have got a dog, you know, they have this these things that dogs wear that say, you know, nervous dog, you know, to, to you know, to kind of inform other people. They've got kind of like uh, something on the dog that's marked and says that I can understand that. But when they're dressed up in all sorts of like these fancy clothes and that, that's just done for human gratification. It's not done for the. So you, you need another one that says aggressive dog. You be nervous. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, aggressive dog. Yeah, <laughs> in tiny writing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah. then this, this final bit before we move on to what you want to talk about now is yeah. because they do, do mark out the thing about property, which is uh, which is very good. Property status yes. of animals. Which is really, in terms of our ethical use of other animals, their property status is a major issue, as as Francione points out all the time. Of yes, course. it is. Yeah, no. it's. I mean, it's not it, it, pro the property status isn't the only problem because you know humans also oppress you know many other animals that we don't consider our property. But the, you know the prop you know animals being property is is a major problem and if it will consider this property is a major problem and a major cause of their oppression. Right now this is um so we're on to cars now. Yeah we're on to cars no. yes. yeah, there you go. let's uh bring this one up then. Oops I did that wrong. Oh no I didn't there we go uh wallop there we go yeah this this is a another article in the guardian where there's a guy christian Wilmar, one of the writers yeah, and he's christian yeah this is yeah this is and, and kind of, when, when i read this i yeah. thought blimey you could you could have written this one ronnie C kind of yeah i mean i'd have written it I, i'd have, i'd have gone further if i'd written this uh, <laughs> but um you know what's happened is 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 the welsh government uh has imposed a 20 mile hour speed limit in many of the residential areas in wales and like there's been a you know quite a big kickback from car drivers and, and stuff on this and this guy you know in the guardian here is writing in support of it um he believes it's the way to go and um it it, it it it's kind of part of because what's happened is we've kind of had a and, and it's been the same really throughout the world, a kind of, you know, decades and decades and decades of like the car is king, you know, you know, roads, you know, new roads being built, destroying the habitat of free living beings, you know, you, you know, polluting the atmosphere, um, killing, you know, myriads of other animals and indeed killing other humans on the roads and all these things, you know, the car has been allowed to kind of, you know, to dominate you know car culture but there have been moves to kind of push that back um like you know these low traffic neighborhoods where certain neighborhoods are cut off from cars and gone back to being pedestrianized and you know this this you know um flowers get planted in planters in the middle of them and and all that and then um there's been these um um, that, that's, that's to stop people bumping up onto onto the pathway. Well, it? yeah, well, we, yeah, it, it is, but but it's but, but they've been turned into kind of you know a lot of these things that are, are there used to kind of block the road have been turned into kind of used to grow plants in and stuff and you know yeah. made to look nice and there's been seating and everything like that. So they become like community community, um, uh, and and then there's been these um, low emission zones. In, in some of the cities over here, particularly in London. In London, there's an ultra low emission zone uh, where cars that, you know, that, that emit over a certain level of pollution, and these are mostly older vehicles, um, uh, aren't allowed to enter. Or if, if they do enter, they've got, they've got, they've got, you know, they've got to pay a fee. You're charged a fee. Um, and uh, that's been expanded in London and, and there's been 
you know people have kicked up a fuss over that and 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 these 20 mile an hour speed limits they're, they're you know they are in in quite a few residential areas throughout the uk um and, and you, that, you, that's, have the, you have the sleeping policemen all, all over the place yeah you, you do have you do have other other ways of traffic control but the 20 mile an hour limit is a kind of you know fairly recent thing you know like you know and it goes back a few years really <clears throat> and 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 it's kind of tends to be you know it's not it's not really it's not really been sort of imposed at a national level it's down to kind of you know local authorities or you know either dis district i think probably county authorities to um so is, is this in place now then it's actually law I, I i it's either in place or it's kind of it, it, it's it's coming in very soon it's you know um this i I, th I think it may well be in place now um and you know obviously it's been kicked back up about it from you know you know people are saying oh, it's war on the motorists you yeah, know, on that right at the top there. Um, it? War on motorists. Yeah. But um, uh, but but he argues, you know, Christian Walmart argues it's that it's people, cyclists, walkers, pedestrians, school children, who have been under assault from the way in which cars have been allowed to dominate our lives. Now, I I can totally agree with that. Um, and um, according to a guy called Mark Drakeford, who's the Welsh first minister, probably like the prime minister there has said that the, the new speed limit will add just seconds rather than minutes to most journeys. And that between six and ten lives, or human lives, <laughs> will be saved every year. And so, you know, just just in, you know, just as far as that goes, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think this is a great idea. I'd like to see it everywhere. Um, but I think kind of what's, what's actually not mentioned in the article is it is is you know it mentions the toll on human life and it's not just lives i mean men in in in, in there's going to be like um a lot more injuries um, <laughs> to 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 humans death like you know in in the uk as a whole um according to government statistics if there around about 1500 um humans are killed every year on the roads and 30,000 are seriously injured. So uh, in addition to those, that number that has been stated for Wales of deaths, there'd be a hell of a lot more uh, humans that would be seriously injured on the roads by cars, you know, traveling. And obviously if, if, if those cars are only traveling at 20 miles an hour, then that's going to, that's going to really reduce the deaths and injuries. Yeah. Um, see, no, no, there's a bit of weird research here. Yeah, 2008 studies show people living on busy roads in Bristol had 75% fewer friends than those on quiet, quieter roads, um, which kind of makes sense as social animals. But it's, it's also yeah, a bit yeah. weird that oh, I'm not going to go go and see Ronnie. He, he lives on a busy road, you know. So I suppose yeah, it well, might... it's obviously yeah, it's obviously has kind of some effect. But you know, my, my kind of real concern. With this is, is is really to do with the main victims of motor vehicles, which which aren't humans. It's you know it's obviously it's obviously <laughs> kind of other animals, and um, there's been a and uh, if we kind of go on to the the next article, I know there's a there's a we've got a we've got an illustration. I don't know whether it would be the time to show that illustration now it's a uh, this is a meme that's been shared on um social media and it's uh <clears throat> it's obviously like it, it's a it take off of the welsh flag where instead of a dragon on the welsh flag there's a snail and it's obviously by people who don't like this um speed limit and, and what's kind of what's what i found really disturbing is the number of vegans that have shared it the number of vegans that seem to kind of sympathise with the people who are opposed to this speed limit, and I find that I, I kind of find that really disturbing. And, and the reason why I find that really disturbing is, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously we should all be concerned about, you know, you know, humans being killed on the roads, but I find it particularly disturbing in terms of the, 
in the number of other animals killed on the roads and the fact that lowering the speed of cars is going to considerably reduce that. And um, so, you know, why... I mean, there's you know, numerous benefits. I mean, Deb's pointing yeah. out here. But but also, going back to the picture, I mean, if you if you look at that, I mean, that's a major road, so that's not even going to be affected, that major road anyway, is it? No, that's not, yeah. Well, it's kind of welcome to Wales. It's like, it's the sign as you're going into Wales, and it's saying that, oh, like, in Wales, you're going to have to drive like this. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. And it's just, yeah. it's just obviously... But that, that, yeah, I think that, that, that looks to me but, like... But a, like this motorway. measure wouldn't even affect it doesn't vehicle. apply to it doesn't apply to major roads i mean i mean personally i i, I would apply i mean I, I i would if if i was in charge right i'd have a 20 mile an hour speed limit on all residential roads and on all country lanes and 30 miles an hour everywhere else nobody would be allowed to drive faster than 30 miles an hour so i think that's quite quite enough that's quite fast enough why do we need to go so bloody fast you think of the the lives that would be saved by having that speed limit you know both human and especially non-human lives would be spared you know i'd definitely i'd 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 i'd, I'd do that straight away i'd do that straight away and i'd have it strictly enforced you know you're, you're a terrible dictator though aren't you Ronnie? So, yeah well i you know yeah i i yeah i i I kind of would love to. I'm not going to ever be a dictator, obviously. But <laughs> if I was a dictator, that's what I do, and certainly that's what I would advocate, and that's what I would campaign for. Yeah, yeah. of course. Well, just, course, just to let you know, I've, I've loaded up all the other articles, so you can go as quickly. Ah, oh, that's as good. You want, well, so. and and, and in, an example of how cars, you know, the impact of cars on other animals is a. And um, th this next article, it's um, um. You know how cars ruin wild animals lives and this this is this this is kind of an article once again we're going you know a bit international because this is like really really centered on the usa yeah um, it's got a good, and, good and, little subtitle there if you love nature don't drive in it which well, is well, 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 well kind of or avoid as much you know as best you can <laughs> driving it that's what i would say um and and this is um uh, you know they're saying that uh people might be surprised by uh <coughs> they're saying that there's you know there's there's a cause of the deaths of the killing of other animals that's only second to factory farming and this is land they're talking about land animals and uh it's not hunting nor is it animal testing nor is it the fur industry it's cars it's cars you see and 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 you see once again you know, this is this is a vegan issue. You know, we have all these people like, you know, campaigning, you know, campaigning against hunting, campaigning against animal testing, campaigning against the fur industry, and they don't consider cars, they don't consider campaigning at all for the you know, for ways to control the harm that cars and other road vehicles do to other animals and yet that's it's a, that's much more serious than what they do campaign against and and, and what i find particularly distressing was that when, you know when we talk about that picture of the snail that i that some of the people that were sharing that were hunt saboteurs so these are people going out trying to save you know and you know free living beings foxes and you know whatever and yet you know they, they they don't want a, a speed limit that's going to save foxes from being killed on the roads. You know what's what's kind of going what's going on. You know this is an example of the very tunnel vision that so many vegans have in lots of different ways. This kind of tunnel vision that they kind of don't. You know oh there's those nasty people going out and like killing foxes. But hang on a minute. You know there's something else going on that kills foxes that actually kills far more than those kind of nasty hunters. And, and we need to be doing something about that. Um, and and this goes on. This is about the USA. Um, and um, there's an environmental journalist there called Ben Goldfarb, who, oh, who's, yeah. who's written a I book about road. Might be, just as a technical note, I think there might yeah. be a, a typo here because it says <clears throat> a commonly cited stat says cars kill a million vertebrates in the US every day. But yes. When you, you click on that i think it actually says every year so i think there might have been yeah but it's but it's it's massively more than that 
because it also said that there's been more recent studies that's estimated the number of bird deaths um, from cars in the USA uh, up to 340 million birds a year. And that's just birds alone. It's not counting other animals. Yeah. So it's obviously, you know, but I mean, so a million a day, a, a, a million a day would be closer because that would be 365 a year. So that would be closer, but, but it's actually estimated now that that's that the figure is actually a lot more than that. Um, I mean, it's hard to get your head around a million a day, isn't it? it yeah, it's yeah, it's absolutely appalling. And then he also says this chap, um, uh, the guy uh, Gold Goldfarb, Ben Goldfarb, he says that it's not just it's not just the fact that you know animals are run over on roads by motor vehicles. Uh, he says that that it, it, it kind of says that they're at the root of all environmental crises, because you know if someone's going to go to a forest to kill an animal, they they drive there on a road, don't they? Yeah. Uh, and you, you cut or, or to go to cut down a forest, you need roads, otherwise you can't get there to do the harm that you're going to do. So that's another you know harm that's kind of come from their be, come from the being roads. As yeah, well as the roads, of course, being driven through. I mean, everywhere that roads have been built, you know, they've been driven through the territory of other animals, haven't they? It's not. It's you know, like you know that saying. It's not. It's it's not the it's not the deer that's crossing the road. It's the road that's crossing the forest. You yeah, know, those right, those yeah. animals were there first, and we've encroached and invaded their habitat. And we need to always remember that. Um, and he also says that switching to electric cars is not enough. We have to become much less car dependent because of course electric cars are going to kill the same all right they might be better for the you know the environment and 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 better in terms of combating the climate crisis which is also killing large, well, they might large be more dangerous might they Ronnie? i mean you can't hear them coming can you you can't hear them come in and well there are some measures where they're kind of actually um uh where electric cars are, are kind of fitted with some kind of noise emitters so that they can be heard. I think that's, you know, I think that. Yeah, it's like a, sub, is, a subsonic thing. It's that... a suggestion. Yeah, so yeah. They, they could be something that other animals could hear. Um, <clears throat> but he also says later in the article that at faster speeds, um, uh, the, the main noise from vehicles is actually the noise from their tyres on the roads rather yeah. than the noise of the engine, so that that would be exactly the same yeah, for electric true. cars, because he talks about the, the problems that the noise of cars causes for other animals. And, and once again, at higher speeds, that can be the um, the sound of the tyres um, rather than the sound of the engines, because um, um, hearing is a very important sense for, you know, for other animals. And um, noise from cars masks, you know, masks the sounds that those animals need to need to hear, whether they're animals in search of prey or whether they're animals being preyed on that are trying to avoid the predators. You know, the sense of the sense of hearing. Yeah, and if they get disorientated, they're in, pro in, in trouble. Yeah. <clears throat> and also that roads, roads create barriers to the movement of other animals, uh, as well as them killing directly. And... Um, they can um, get in the way of animals migrating. And he, he, he quotes an example of um, uh, the mule deer and pronghorn in Wyoming. And they starve en masse uh, because they can't reach um, the valleys where they find food in winter because highways have, have blocked the way. So there's also that. It's not just the direct impact of cars. It's also the impact of highways as a whole. So like the whole thing is like you know, we've created a nightmare for animals, really, for our, with, through our road system and the yeah, but the you vehicles think that, travel along it. That kind of thing will be a solution. Well, the thing is that, yes, you see, and he also, because he's involved in, in these solutions and wildlife crossings, he says they can be, incredibly effective but, but there's not enough of them and they've been together with roadside fencing growing. but also he says that um uh, also that they're kind of they tend to be they tend to it, they, they, the, the the main emphasis for them tends to be on benefit to humans in other words like you know stop you know so people's cars don't get you know damaged by hitting a deer or you know 
somebody may be killed, you know, through a collision with a, a larger animal. And so yeah. a lot of them are kind of aimed at um, providing crossings for larger animals. But he says that that needs to be done for for smaller animals as well, you know, and, and, and that, you know, a, a lot could be done on that. And I think in a vegan run society, we we would we would we would we would bring in lots of lots of measures to reduce the harmful impact of motor vehicles you know like first of all right, reduce right, the number like wobbly roads according to this well, well there's lots of different ways yeah yeah it's lots of different ways that you know that because that cuts speed doesn't it if roads aren't right in a straight line um lots of ways we 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 could do that i mean obviously first of all you know it's you know slow vehicles down as i said you know have these really you know, really low speed limits, strictly enforced. Um, second, reduce the number of vehicles on the road by, I'd say, free public transport, you know, get people out of their cars, free and, you know, well-run, efficient public transport. So there's not, not so many vehicles on the roads. And, and like, kind of make, make people think more about, you know, do I really need to make a journey? Like, I think, you know, in the world of business, a lot of journeys don't need to be made for business meetings and stuff like that. And already that's kind of starting to happen. And I think it was kind of, you know, in during lockdown, people used Zoom and other conferencing, um, internet conferencing um, apps, didn't they? Uh, you know, to cut, to have meetings. And I think that's continued to some extent. More people working from home and stuff like that. And that and that reduces that reduces journeys, doesn't it, on the roads? Um, and uh, and and yeah, and all sorts of you know, we need to think of whatever measures we can, you know, to reduce this huge death toll on the roads because um <clears throat> it's it's not just the USA. And I think next there's a um a couple of articles here that you know refer to the UK. You, you wanna go for them? We're coming yeah, up. Yeah, to... go for the yeah. Okay, we're coming up to um an hour and a half, so we yeah we haven't got too much we, more to go, go though now. Yeah, people will be grateful. This, <laughs> this is the one that you want, I think. Yeah, uh, let me bring it up for you. Um, wallop, that's the one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's by the mammal side. This was a survey done in two thousand and one, and the situation is liable to be worse now because of course there's more more cars on the roads now. Um, and you know they they came to the conclusion that. Uh, in in Britain, annual road casualties are estimated to account for hundred thousand foxes, and that's far more than the number of foxes killed by hunting, yeah. for instance. And yet, you know, you know, well, you've that's got what the like, article said too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred thousand hedgehogs, fifty thousand badgers. But I think the badger cull of all the years of the badger cull, I think they're aiming at killing a hundred thousand badgers, and here we have fifty thousand badgers every year killed on the roads by motor vehicles. Yeah. And 30,000 to 50,000 deer. So that's that one. That's in terms of the number of mammals. And then the next one, um, next article. Well, let's have a quick look. So, I mean, they, they've got some. Yeah, they've got things. Yeah, you want to, they've got graphs and yeah. that, you know, illustrating yeah. the research. We, we quite, oh, yeah. so, th so this is not the general finding. This is the localized uh, research. And yeah, the, they've done localized yeah. research. I think they've probably done this one here, which is really interesting, actually. Yeah. But we don't really have time to go through it. No, I no, look, no. I was looking at the, the rats. Um, NS means not significant or non significant, but the fact that they're in an urban space is and um, proximity to a road bend, which is interesting. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Being, being near a road this... bend is, is not particularly good for rats, apparently. So, yeah. Yeah, you okay, see the small, right. yeah. Um and, and the the next one, um, next article, which is even older, and so once again the situation is going to be worse. Um the, the next one is an article from 1994. You got that one, Roger? Yeah, this is an article from the Independent, and and it's um uh, a survey where they counted, um, you know, the number of dead birds on the roads. And this was done in, in the summer of 1985. So imagine how worse it's, you know, how much worse it's going to be now. And uh, it was estimated the minimum of 30 million birds are killed on Britain's roads every year. The article is 94, it says here. The article is 94, but the research 
was done in 85. And there's mention so of 87 here too. We're so many, you know, yeah, you know, the number of vehicles on the road is far more now. Um, and, and they even say it could be as high as 70 million a year in terms of the number of birds. But people don't notice birds. People go, what, you know, what are you talking about, birds? I don't really see dead birds. But the thing is, birds are so small that you kind of don't notice them. Like you'll see a dead badger by the side of the road, a dead fox, dead rabbit, dead deer. But birds are so small, you're not going to see them. And I think this is one of the reasons why people are really surprised at this figure. But it's based on research. And, uh, of course, this is all part of a, a kind of much bigger picture regarding the impact of humans on other animals, which uh, we, can, we can kind of look at in our final article. Right here. Bear with me. I shall get it for you. Uh, da, 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 da. So this is this one, I believe. Okay. You are making me work hard today, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to have a lie down afterwards, Roger. And me, I have to have a lie down afterwards and a cup of tea. Um, uh, this is a recent, fairly recent article on the it, Guardian. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Uh, and um, um, I'd like to give a shout out, actually. There's a guy called David Mitchell. And he sends out every day... Um, yeah, a, a, a kind of, you know, information about stuff that's appeared in the media about, you know, uh, other animals and, you know, the kind of impact of humans on other animals and stuff like that. And a lot of this, a, a lot of these articles actually come from the emails he sends out. So, you know, I don't know whether he's listening to this, <laughs> but a big thank you to him for, for this, because it's kind of, you know, really made it much easier to, to find all this stuff. Um, anyway, this one, yeah, um, uh, it's 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 it's, uh, it's a, a, a study that's been published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Um, they've come to the conclusion that groups of animal species are vanishing at a rate thirty-five times higher than average due to human activity. And they say it's, evident, it's further evidence that a sixth, a sixth mass extinction in Earth's history is underway and accelerating. Um, and so uh, if you look at the rate at which um, animal species have gone extinct in the past 500 years, um, without the impact of humans, that would have taken 18,000 years. Yeah. Because animals, you know, even without human impact, some animals would still go extinct, but it'd be massively, massively, massively fewer. Than... Yeah, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, Julia Gelatli from Viva uh, was on the Piers Morgan show, and she mentioned this sixth mass extinction. He, he didn't know what she was talking about. No, no, he, well, he wouldn't. Well, I thought I thought it was pretty common knowledge. I mean, Steve Best has been on about it for years. Yes, you know? yes. And, of course, the other mass extinction would be caused by, you know, like, huge natural phenomena like you know uh, i think the dinosaurs were were wiped out by volcanic acti huge volcanic activity weren't they and there's been like you know well, some the, theories about about um comets i think also. yeah yeah stuff like you know this this stuff but but this is like this is you know those things were unavoidable these those were naturally occurring you know things that happen, but the, the, you know all this is totally avoidable because it's been caused by humans. It's totally avoidable, you know, wiping out of these animals. Because when we talk about extinction, of course, you know, as 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 vegans, we're concerned about, you know, we're concerned about animals as individuals, their importance of uh, as individuals, their lives and their, you know, their suffering as individuals. But when you know, in the process of a species becoming extinct, there is going to be, like in a huge amount of killing and suffering, isn't there? Because, they, you know, the, the extinction of species involves the, you know, the deaths of individual members of that species, doesn't it? Um, and probably all kind of knock-on effects as well. And, that, yeah, and, and starvation and the suffering that goes with that and, you know, the, the other way, you know, the other ways that, 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 that they're killed. And the study found that at least 73 
mammal, bird, reptile and amphibian species groupings have gone extinct since the year 1500. Um, Let's see if I can find that bit. Yeah. Um, Not sure where that bit is. Uh, and, and, and the losses are, are projected to accelerate in coming years because of habitat destruction, the climate crisis and the illegal trade in wildlife. Oh, yeah, that, that's the so speed. It, yeah. You know, they say it's a situation that's going to get worse unless we do something about it. And there's also uh, a link to the actual study there as well. Yeah, there's links to that. And, of course, what is the most important thing we can do about it? Which is the what is the major, major, major cause of, of all this? Is, we should have a vote, people. What do you reckon Ronnie's yeah, going to say next? the major cause of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What do you think is the biggest threat to life on Earth? And, and you know, the environmentalist George Monbiot. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we we showed the, the extract from the video by George Monbiot, didn't we? Where, where he yeah. asked the question, what is the biggest, the greatest threat to life on Earth? And he said people would be surprised. But I don't think as vegans we'd be, be surprised by it. Yeah, he said farming, didn't he? But it's farming, but in particular animal farming. Animal I mean, farming, yeah. Um, uh, because it's a major driver of the climate crisis. Um, there, there's a, an organisation called Climate Healers who produced a paper where they've analysed, you know, the climate crisis, the contributing factors to it, and they've come to the conclusion that the Animal agriculture is 87% responsible for the climate crisis. And the main reason for that is because of the land it takes up um, that denies denies the opportunity to um, draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere because it prevents that land from returning to forest or, or, or other types of vegetation that would, that would pull the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So, the, you know, the number one thing that everyone can do about this is, is to go vegan, is to become vegan. And that's the number one that ev everyone can do in their personal lives to actually to do something about this. But I, I, I would say, you know, equally as importantly to go out and educate other people to become vegan. Because it's no good us, us being vegan while so many other people aren't. Just us being vegan isn't gonna. It's gonna make some difference to this, but it's not. It's not gonna be yeah, enough to the mustard. Stop it, you see. So we, you know, it, it's not just about. I mean, obviously, primarily, you know, animal farming and and the fishing industry, which also makes a huge contribution to the climate crisis. You know, primarily, you know, we're concerned about the direct victims of those industries. You know the the animals that are farmed and are slaughtered and are pulled out of the ocean, but then also there's all the other animals that are victims of these industries because of the um, the harm that, that those those industries cause to the climate and to um, you know to the ecosystem. And so we've you know you know animal farming and and fishing actually kill animals twice. They kill the animals directly killed and they kill all the other animals that die because of the impact of those industries uh, on the environment. So there's kind of like really two huge reasons to be vegan and two huge reasons to absolutely spread veganism as much as we possibly can. And that's an overriding thing. I mean, we've, you know, you know, the, you know, that we've, we've talked about, you know, motor vehicles, the impact of motor vehicles on, uh, you know, on, on other animals. And, and that's, that's a huge vegan issue, huge vegan issue, which, so many vegans don't don't consider don't consider it to be, you know, anything to do with veganism. It's absolutely everything to do with veganism. We need to do whatever we can to curb the harmful impact of motor vehicles on other animals. But that has to be seen within the overall picture of, you know, all, all, all the other reasons why other animals are 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 perishing, um, which is. Once again, other forms of human activity, isn't it? 
yeah. which we it have to do. To most vegans are just still flying around the world as though. Um, well, you no see, this, this, yeah, this is another thing, and this is this, you know, this kind of tunnel vision. It's like kind of, you know, there's very, very limited vision within vegans that that kind of, in 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 various ways, you know, there's those people consider themselves vegans think veganism is only a diet. You know, um, uh, there's you know there's those that that you know don't think there's any connection between you know veganism and you know the the oppression of humans, for instance. You know that's another limitation people will impose on veganism. And then you know there's all these areas of the the oppression of other animals that pe people don't consider to be anything to do with veganism. And of course, one of those is the the human caused climate crisis. Mm -hmm. um and and flying in planes is a major contributor to that so you know it's part of the vegan effort for us to try and avoid that as much as possible but you know people will just you know you know fly away on holiday all around the world you know and and then they'll be coming back and you know doing their hunts having or doing their protest outside you know the vivisection labs or you know even doing vegan outreach when they've done a major thing in, in, in their own life that contributes to the oppression of other animals. You know, yeah, we have to really consistency would be good. Now yeah, um, we have to look at the we have to look at the bigger picture, you know, like it's kind of, you know, all, all the areas in which animals are oppressed other animals oppressed by humans. And we need to be trying to do something about all of them. Well, Ronnie, I think we ought to let these good people go and say thank you for tuning in as ever. Before we do go, um, for those who might be around uh, at the same time as this show, so 7 o'clock Irish time, which is the same as 7 o'clock British time, Sentient Rights Island has got a Zoom session tomorrow, and uh, Wendy, Wendy McGovern from the Animal Rights Show and Thrive Vegan World um, is the guest speaker, so... Uh, if you fancy um, tuning into that, that's where to go. Sentient Rights Island on Facebook, I believe. You'll get the link. And um, I'm hosting it for the first time. So um, if you do, if you are there, I'll, I'll see you then. So um, yes, and, and and you'll be hosting it, and I shall be, and I and I shall be there as part of it, of course. Oh, very good. Okay, but that is providing that we're both still alive. I suppose it would be. We need to be still alive in 24 hours. So uh, <laughs> see you, everyone.